We'll get right into this episode, but first, I just want to remind everyone that while it may look like things are returning to normal, there's a very good possibility that these lockdowns will continue into next year. And if that happens, it's more likely that we're all going to have to deal with food shortages. Even when we do open back up, there's a chance that the virus will cause everything to lock down again. Don't just wait and hope that things are going to work out. Be proactive and make sure that you and your family won't have to worry about food shortages. And I trust and use my Patriot Supply. You can too. This week, save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. My Patriot Supply food kits last up to 25 years in storage and include breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. Preparewithdronetech.com. Have you ever noticed that no matter what, right-leaning protests are always demonized, while left-wing protests are always supported and promoted by the DNC media? This is expected since the media is dominated by Democrats and left-wing activists. However, they're taking it to a whole new level this time, with the rhetoric beginning to sound like what you might hear from a backwoods Klansman when they rant about the people that they hate. That brings us to our favorite hive of scum and villainy, the spew. Well, I'd like to ask them if they're willing to sign away their right to treatment if and when they get infected. Are you going to say, okay, I don't need a ventilator because I thought I should go out and defy the governor's order, okay? And, and I'd like to know if people are in states that are following the guidelines, like people like us in New York, can be sure that these people don't come here. These people? Her words are just dripping with hate for people who are just trying to secure our freedoms in the face of brazen constitutional violations. The fact is, we have a constitutional right to protest, and any police or mayor who are arresting people for that are violating their constitutional oath. And it's not as if these orders are the least bit consistent. People aren't allowed to get seeds for gardening, but the liquor stores are deemed essential. Another good question is, what thresholds are they using to to institute these lockdowns. It's very unclear. Good luck finding any solid answers. I think the problem here is that Behar doesn't really care about freedom because she's free to do whatever she wants no matter what happens. To her, freedom is just some sort of right-wing kooky conspiracy theory. And Behar is just unhinged here. Why would she not want sick people to be able to get the health care that they need? That's a special kind of deep burning hatred. And as far as I can tell, these protesters are, for the most part, wearing masks and staying six feet apart from each other. Some of the pictures and videos I've seen from Michigan and North Carolina show police not wearing masks and not staying six feet apart. Her true ignorance shines when she asks if these protesters can be kept from coming to New York. I mean, currently, New York has the largest amount of cases in this country while they pile people onto trains and blame Trump for the spread. The problem isn't people coming to New York. The problem is New Yorkers leaving and spreading the virus throughout the country. And yet she demonizes these protesters who are likely locked down right now because of people from New York. Isn't it amazing how quickly these people became bigoted fascists after they baselessly called us fascists for the last four years. And, and by right. the way, uh, they're right. watching Fox a little too much. They're watching Laura Ingram, um, who tweeted, time to get your freedom back. Uh, who tweeted, time to get your freedom back. And then and the brilliant Janine Pirro, in early March, she was parroting Trump that the infection rate would drop as the weather warms. I mean, this is who they're listening to. Ingram said, let's get freedom back? Well, that's witch talk. Let's get her on the pyre. And what about the warm weather? Will it help us beat the virus at least until the fall? It's not definite, and there are some saying that it might not. But just look at a world map of COVID infections. All the hot places seem to have lower rates of infection. So yeah, it's still up in the air, but Behar acts like she's got it all figured out. Why is Senator Kennedy arguing the uh, economy over people's lives? These people are super rich and they live in gated bubbles and apparently have no idea how the real world works. Without an economy and people working at their jobs, nobody can make money, which means that they can't pay their bills and they can't buy the things they need to survive. If that 
that situation carries on for too long, you're going to see death and destruction that dwarf anything from this outbreak. But besides that, we trade lives for our economy every day. Around 600,000 Americans die every year from heart disease, but we still keep all those restaurants open and groceries are still stocked with all that food that causes heart disease. In fact, we can still buy bad food, cigarettes, and alcohol right now, despite the fact that it causes heart disease and leads to complications if you get this virus. We keep driving cars, even though tens of thousands of people die in crashes every year. It just goes to show that there are ample examples of how we do this every day, but it also shows the level of thought this overstuffed bratwurst has put into it. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Have a great weekend and keep coming back.